Hey guys, welcome to Jake Caleb Design, and I am your host, Jake. And today we're going to talk about how I approach magic and how I use magic effects in my fantasy covers or urban fantasy or just whenever I need to have a magical effect. Uh, I'm going to use a pre-made cover that I did a while back that already has uh, magic in it so that you can kind of uh, see as a reference as I go about doing it. What I hope to focus on is just the magic here. Uh, I'm not really worried about some of the glows and stuff I have elsewhere, but I want to just kind of show you how I do the magic effect uh, really quickly because if you watch my time lapse video, uh, the magic happens, the magic effect right here on her hand happens very, very quickly. And that's because I kind of have just a system of how I always approach magic and it allows me to uh, knock it out really quickly so I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, the first thing is uh, I went in here in my original render, which is you know this right here. I cut her arm out uh, so that I could have it in front of the magic during the during the uh, design part, so that it kind of does have that depth and kind of really does feel integrated, um, like I'm aiming for. But the magic itself is just is just this uh, swirly brush and. Um, just some layer style effects and I want to show you those really quickly and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move over to this side of the pre-made I'm going to hide my background um, so that I can have a kind of have a black a black canvas to work with uh, you can draw your magic um, or you can download brushes that already have the magical magical effects that you're looking for for me I just have brushes mostly I rarely do draw my own magic because most of the time I don't need it to be specific, I just need to show that there's magic. Um, if it's urban fantasy, it's coming off of her hand, uh, their hands, or if it's um, you know fantasy magic, they could be you know powering up, getting ready to, to cast it, or or, or whatever. Um, I really need to be very very specific as long as it has that organic-y moving motion kind of feel, um, and it kind of feels powerful. Um, and there's brushes out there that you can do, and you can download your own, or you can go and um, make your own. Uh, the ones I'm using or going to reference today are uh, Ron's uh, Light Fusion brushes, and I'll link those uh, down below in my description. I'm just gonna pick one really quickly. Uh, this is one of the ones, I, one of my favorite ones to use. Um, it has a nice uh, circular effect, and um, it kind of, it immediately, it immediately gives me that magic feel. And if you're gonna do a hand or something like that, you know, you can put the hand in the center here and it gives that uh, magic aurora really quickly. Uh, I've chosen just gray as my color because in the end of the day, the base color is relevant. Um, for me, from here on, it's all about my layer styles. And there's only three of them that I use. So I'm gonna go down here to my blending. I'm gonna select my layer with my, with my magic on it. I'm gonna go down to my blending options and I already have my uh, effects saved so that I can make my magic really quickly. But you can uh, just copy these and you can save these effects once you make them so that you can always apply your magic really quickly. But I have six of them saved already. All I have to do is just apply the layer styles and I immediately have uh, some magic to work with. I have red, blue, and then other colors as, we, as you go on through here. Uh, I'll just leave it on the red for right now. The three layer styles that I work with are color overlay, outer glow, and drop shadow. Color overlay, I always have it set to white. Um, sometimes I adjust that depending on the uh, use of the magic or where I'm going to be working with it or how I'm going to be working with it. And you can, again, play with that. This, the blending mode is set to normal. It can be, uh, you can change it. Uh, I, since this is red, I could push my color to, uh, toward red. And it kind of begins to give me a different effect. And just depending on the application, you may want to do that. But for me, I always leave it white mostly uh, because in my mind, magic is powerful. And where it's most powerful, it's going to be the brightest. So it's going to usually end up being white or tending toward white. And so I just leave it usually on white. I rarely ever mess with that. But that would be up to you and your application. But color overlay set to white, easy breezy. The, the next one, outer glow, is where you really begin to add your, your color uh, for your magic. Uh, again, we've used in red here as an example. So I have red selected. Um, I can change that red to a deeper red. I can change it to uh, green or yellow or blue. Uh, just whatever suits my fancy for the uh, magic that I'm going to be working with during, during my cover process. Uh, I'm just going to leave it here with the red. Uh, I have the blend mode set to screen. Uh, you can try other ones, but screen for me seems to be the best part. 
or the best uh, mode. My opacity is set at 75%, but again, this is a slider that you can change. You go If you take it down, obviously you're gonna go back toward just uh, white. Um, so 75 to 100 kind of gives you some a range to play with uh, for intensity. I don't really mess with the noise. Uh, you could if you wanted to, but um, for the most part, the noise just kind of adds those little speckles and for magic, I don't really use that. Uh, my technique is set to softer. I don't even mess with precise. I don't, I don't even know what the hell that does. So I leave it alone. Spread is usually set on zero. My size, I do adjust, um, and it gives you different, uh, different intensities to your glow. So it can, uh, it can, you can low, lower it by going, bring the size down. Makes it a little bit less intense. Bring the size up. The red gets more intense. Uh, last but not least, uh, the quality, I leave my contour on just that default um, default diagonal line. Range, again, is kind of like size. It allows you to uh, mess with the uh, intensity and how far out your glow will be. Um, for me, I leave it at 50%, kind of gets where I want to go. You can go in and tweak it, just depending on how you're wanting to incorporate your glow uh, and incorporate your magic. So that's the that's outer glow and the last one to my whole to this whole thing is a drop shadow layer style and it's usually set at yellow and it's set on color dodge um you cannot see that here um you really don't see it all the blacker your background is or the blacker your magic is uh, that the background is that your magic's contrasting off of you will not see this uh yellow effect but i'm going to turn uh my background uh back on and uh, oh, I didn't hit okay on my layer style, so that's okay. Um, I'm gonna turn my background back on and I'm gonna move my magic down uh, into this area here to where there's some lighter areas, and you're gonna see how that yellow plays a part. So, turn my layer styles back on. So, this is why I have them saved so that if I mess up something, I can just go back in and pop it in and add it. So, uh, you should see now the yellow and how it is uh, playing a part in. Uh, against this uh, lighter background um, you don't have to have this layer uh, I'm turning it off here and you see that it that the magic plays uh, pretty well against the lighter background um, I do like to keep it because it can add an intensity or kind of a, a little more of a, a more of a hum or a glow to the to the magic here it's a bit intense because of the yellow kind of overtakes the red uh, pretty badly so I would adjust my opacity on it um, and then you could go into outer glow and I can mess with I could mess with my opacity here to bring in some more reds um, Just kind of depending on how you want to do it, uh, but the yellow kind of gives it a little bit more Contrast and a little bit more glow for me magic is like I said typically going to be real glowy It's going to be real powerful. It's going to be real organic and so that yellow uh, drop shadow begins to uh, begins to help that against a lighter background if I move this into the black, uh, the yellow pretty much goes away. So it's kind of just kind of a hit or miss thing depending on if you need it or not. Uh, it usually only really comes into effect, like I said, when you're up against a, um, a light background. Uh, and depending on what, how light a background, you know, it can um, completely um, wash out and you may need to go in and adjust it from there, um, depending on uh, your application and the background that it's against. But my settings for this layer style, I have it set to color dodge. You can play with screen. Um, sometimes that works really well. Color dodge kind of gives it a better, more effect that I like. Um, but you can change this to screen um, and just pick how you want to how you want to uh, interact. Uh, I'm going to leave it at color dodge for now. The opacity again uh, is a slider that you can mess with all day long, um, de depending on how you want to integrate it. I don't really mess with distance or spread, but I mean you could. Uh, there may be an application where you know that does, where you know it does serve you well. Uh, I leave it at zero most of the time. Uh, the size, again, is is a slider that I do adjust depending on how I want it to interact with my background. Uh, the contour is on the curve instead of a straight diagonal line, and that curve is down here uh, on the bottom left uh, of your uh, contour options. Uh, you can again, again, it's optional. You don't have to have it. You see the difference here between the two. There's not much. Um, but I do find the curve kind of gives it a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a bump that I like. Noise set to zero. Again, I don't want to want to add, um, I don't want to add those grainy speckles, so I leave my noise at zero. So 
uh, that's pretty much it for my magic and how I handle it. And you can see how I'm going to just delete this really quickly and how I have my uh, basic gray magic. I'm going to pull it over here and I just want to show you real fast how it would integrate into a piece. So I'm going to hide my old magic and I just have my uh, new layer, my new magic layer. And I'm going to go into my layer styles that I have saved. And again, the only three layer styles I'm messing with are color overlay, outer glow, and drop shadow. Just those three. I'm going to change it to a blue. Um, or, a, yeah, I'm going to change it to this one here. And just with that one change, bam, you know, my magic begins to immediately integrate into my piece. Uh, I can go into and pull another magic layer. Let's see. Choose this one here. And... I'm going to just do. I'm going to hold down my Option button and drag my effect onto this layer, and really quickly, I can begin to build up uh, my magical effect. And I'm doing this all in you know in the span of about you know uh, 30 seconds or more, a minute, and so I don't have to spend a lot of time doing my magic because uh, in most cases people just need to see there's magic there. It doesn't need to necessarily be specific to anything. And so uh, just really quickly, you can see how it begins to build on itself. And so that's how I approach my magic. That's how I get my magic done really, 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 really quickly. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video. I hope it was somewhat informative. And um, I will see you next time. Take care.